well friends in this lecture we will study detection of spoilage in food grains you know that the grains when they are harvested from the field they are harvested at different uh, conditions so depending upon the agronomical practices and other environmental conditions at the time of harvesting the grain may contain less or more moisture also the grain may contain loads of microorganisms such as bacteria mold their spores etc and these all spoil the grain the molds associated with the cereal grain spoilage which are the major causative agents that uh, they may be field mold or they may be storage mold that is the field molds are those which invade the grain before its harvest they attack the grain in the field storage molds generally invade the grain during its a post harvest operation like drying handling storage etc etc if they found the conditions in the grain favorable for their growth the fusarium and penicillium these are the two important molds for which attack or which grow in the cereal grains and spoil their quality so in the fusarium is a field mold that is it normally invades or in, infects the grain in the field itself before harvest penicillium is a storage mold so apart from this mold growth the food grains also spoil due to insect infestation right and these mold bacteria insect and all those things they may get uh, there is the various factors which might uh, facilitate their growth or multiplication in the food so the you can say the major factor among the various factors major one are the they told you moisture level in the grain the physical damage to the grain if any and importantly the temperature of the grain temperature in the storage environment so these are the sub. so when these agents act on the grain they bring about a different changes in the grain in different attributes right so these attributes are sometimes or many times are quite often are used to detect or identify the spoilage level in the grain so as i told you the grain spoilage vectors are rodents bird insect fungi moisture temperature etc and in this picture you can see that the storage month that is starting zero at the top and uh, 12 months in the bottom and this uh, and x axis is the grain moisture content may be initially it may be 15% or there is the or so there is the at the time of harvest then it may increase there is the the grain moisture content may go 15 to 22% range is taken here and the storage month 0 to 12 so when there is a high moisture content that is which may be that uh, in the field or at the time of harvest i told you so this field microflora right fusarium and other case which is indicated by the green line then in the drying operations etc after it is harvested then the moisture content is brought down the other conditions in the grain are the factors they may be controlled so some other flora intermediate flora which is shown here in the white name of the various microorganisms etc then finally in the when the during the storage period further again starting from less moisture content to higher moisture content that is when the grain is put in the the storage it may have comparatively lower moisture content and then during the period if the proper conditions are not maintained inside the grain moisture content may go higher so all this uh, will influence different so this gives an overview of the microbial ecology system present inside the storage environment and which ultimately work or 
grow on the grain or multiply in the grain and produce undesirable changes. So, here in this uh, it is a uh, that is the Canadian Grain Commission that is the uh, slide taken from their presentation. So, they say that the five common mistakes which are done that is five storage mistakes which results into the grain spoilage or that is the too much grain loaded in the bin to properly dry and store that is the density of the grain that is the comp it should not be very highly dense it is not loading should not be very high otherwise it will that is the grain which respires that is removal of the heat of the respiration etcetera may be not proper even aeration that is the grains which are on the top or on the sides they may have different uh, environment than those which are the interior grains which are in the interior. Then uh, again second check the grain temperature, temperature kept too high, it should not be very high temperature inside the storage environment otherwise it may result into the scorching of the grain, grain forms a dome instead of settling level in the bin that is if that is the IR that is the it is dome is far then again is not a good uh, practice grain is harvested in hot weather and is stored without aeration. So, that my moisture migration is at are more moisture if the aeration is not proper that then it may uh, serve as a vector for the mold growth or other and bins are left uninspected for weeks at a time. So, the maximum grain drying temperature for different purposes that is for the seed purposes, for the commercial use, food purposes, for feed purposes in different seed they have recommended the storage temperature. So, in this just uh, uh, in this picture I have tried to show you that is it is a well known fact that how that is the proper aeration in the earlier class also we discussed this aspect that is when the grains are stored in the storage facility the proper aeration should be maintained, proper temperature should be maintained some by a following appropriate fumigation or disinfestation method means that is the proper conditions inside the storage facility must be maintained to keep the grain for longer period of time. So, depending whether outside the atmosphere is uh, more or low that is hot weather during hot season or during colder region or colder seasons. So, one has to make keep the arrangement or one has to either blow hot air inside the storage facility or blow cool air inside the storage facility and the grains should be kept in such a way that at least almost individual grains should have a similar environment. So, if that is a like heap is there or the proper conditions are not there you can say that insects when they grow they cause they respire they produce heat also the grain respires they produce heat. So, it causes that hot spot. So, this hot spot may, means that grain temperature may be interior inside the grain temperature becomes high and this because of the high grain temperature causes sub moisture to evaporate and this moisture evaporates and may be on the surface if the outside temperature is lower or even this uh, grains which are in the side they may have a lower temperature. So, because of this temperature gradient there may be condensation of the moisture occurs and this uh, the grain further it in its moisture content increases. So, that is the condensation and so, also the more moisture content may result into or more humidity moisture content may result into the sprouting of the grain. So, the sprouting or the damage to the due to moisture rising from hot spot etcetera may take place and ultimately grain may spoil either by fungus growth there or these condition even insects birds. So, the different these factors when they work on the grains alright in the improper storage environment improper storage of the material conditions then obviously, they have certain effect that is they cause the uh, change in the quality attributes alright and this is manifested in terms of uh, certain that is the consequences are there. So, in this slide or in the tabular form I have tried to summarize you that what are the effects of the 
grain is spoiled that is the, the either microbial growth or the temperature change or the humidity change or whatever. So, it has some effects and these effects are visible in terms of certain observations and which finally, results into the quality change or uh, gives the consequence like for example, that is the heating of the product. It may be observed the wind burning and it may ultimately result into the damage to the product and even premises there may be possible degrading rejection extra cost or could lead to fire burning or explosion. The adverse quality changes if they are effect they there may be it may result into the dull appearance of the grain, musty others, visible molds might be there, reduced germination and so on. And the consequence of all these changes may be that is the grain may be degraded, it may lose its marketability, it may be rejected by seed germinators or it can it may not be good for seed purposes. All right, it may be even for food purposes in the by the factory, if you uh, that is its uh, grain if quality is deteriorated, it may not be accepted by the factory for the its conversion into different products etcetera. So, means that it is very important to know that first that is to maintain the proper environment, proper conditions in the storage facility and then one should monitor that uh, what are the that is by taking appropriate measures there are different methods which I will tell you in the next slides that is uh, by taking uh, samples and analyzing it by various control because these factors they influence they affect they affect the quality of the grain they affect the color of the grain they affect the flavor of the grain so and so on. So, all these attributes can be used for finding out for analyzing the spoilage are detecting the infestation or other spoilages in the grain. Okay. So, means that is how you can monitor the spoilage that is the here just you see that what are the factors which cause the spoilage. So, those factors that is whether those factors are properly maintained or the fluctuation in those factors how it is changing the quality like for example, maintaining and monitoring the changes caused in the grain due to the change in the temperature, due to change in moisture, due to change in color or this these changes are spoilage they may result into the change in the color or order of the there may be carbon dioxide production, there might be certain physiological changes in the grain even germinability germination of the grain may be reduced or there may be changes in the proximate composition, there may be presence of visible insects like mold colonies, fungi etcetera, microbiological changes can be found out or even mycotoxin molds etcetera, they may grow, they may develop some toxin in the food material like mycotoxin etcetera, which are common problems in the spoilage of the aisle seeds and so on. So, monitoring these factors and the changes in the grain into these their particular labels is used to detect the spoilage in grain. So, we I will just elaborate one by one that is the first number one is the temperature sensing devices that is the sensing for sensing the changes in the grain or based upon the temperature changes are to know that how to whether the proper temperature is maintained inside the storage facility in the grain are uh, different thermos different therm temperature sensing and maintaining devices are thermostat sensors thermocouples etcetera are available and they can be used and in fact different digital temperature sensors etcetera for silos for bins bins all those things are even for small scale for large scale measurement for online measurement these are available is plenty in the market so they can be used so the, there are wind thermometers, thermocouples, thermistors, temperature sensing cables, thermography, temperature sensing paint and table are even vertically inserted rods sometimes used in the which they increase in the temperature in the rod just some to measure the temperature inside the grain. So, there are various methods they can be used uh, to make sure 
that the desired level of temperature is maintained and once if the desired temperature is maintained obviously the spoilage can be prevented. Then thermal imaging for spoilage detection in the stored grain that is another upcoming and major important technology which is now becoming uh, practiced by some agencies in countries like thermography you can see here by taking the images of the grains or of the materials which are uh, changed due to effect in the due to the temperature change etcetera. So, thermography is the science of producing pictures from invisible thermal radiations. There is a temperature variations in stored products within the storages or storage environment are converted into images and viewed and recorded by photography that you can see here in this case. So, the, this picture clearly shows the difference in the temperature. Okay. Similarly, the moisture sensing devices are a lot of in the earlier class also uh, when we were discussing food storage, grain storage there I told you that uh, the different types of moisture sensors are available even quick moisture meter that is online monitor meter probes are there which can be directly inserted and it gives you the data which you can see in this figure right. Then uh, NIR or IR moisture analyzers are there. So, all this they are used so quick meter or even the chemical methods using uh, moisture meters are using drying ovens etcetera can be used. Means that is the means to say to detect the to know that whether the grain is spoiled or it is not spoiled, the moisture uh, can be analyzed, samples can be taken right moisture and uh, to make sure that it is ensured that if the moisture content is uh, not up to the mark. So, obviously, it will lead to the spoilage or in the spoilage spoiled grain that is the moisture content may be more or high. So, for selecting that uh, the type of moisture meter to be used for these different factors which one can take into consideration include resolution, reportability, reliability etcetera and this in the earlier class last class also I elaborated a little bit. Then another parameter which can be used to detect the spoilage is the color measurement because there is the when many a times then when insect grow or this fungi etcetera they go they bring about changes in the color of the food materials because even the heat produced uh, in the grain it may cause uh, that is change in the color. So, this color change there are various spectrophotometers or color analyzers etcetera available that is even handy color uh, is or even by other spectrophotometric methods this hunter lab colorimeter and all those things they can be used for detection of the color or for finding out that LAB value etcetera and then on the basis of this one can uh, find that visible change in the or the change in the quality of the food or the food. that is for example, that is the dull seeds indicate the likelihood of mold or the, such other spoilage problems. If the grain becomes brown or black so, the brown development of black or brown color accompanied by a tobacco like odor indicate the bin burn that is the grain the temperature inside the bin was too high and the grains. Similarly, black vacuolated seeds usually fused together and accompanied by a fire color indicate the fire burn inside the grain. So, by measuring the color of the grain one can uh, find out whether the quality of the grain is good or bad or there is any deviation in the quality or spoilage level. Similarly, the order measurement can be used another criteria for detection of the spoilage in the earlier class we have seen that uh, E nose we use that E nose basically uh, analyzes the flavor volatiles or smell volatiles etcetera. So, when the 
micro organisms grow insect uh, consume the grains etc they bring they produce secondary metabolites even the moisture changes etc they may it may cause into hydrolysis of the products so either by chemical means or by uh, biological means right by enzymatic action and all those things many secondary metabolites may be produced uh, might be produced in the grain and which give the different colors are many a times many foul smells are sensed or noticed. So, the volatiles generated during storage are generally aliphatic alcohols, amine compounds, ketones and other carbonyl compounds may be in some cases in little more or less in. So, these other address compounds they can be used qualitatively as well as they can be analyzed qualitatively or quantitatively using systems like uh, ENOS we have already studies which has metal oxide sensors or there are certain systems which use piezoelectric sensor or MOSFET or gas sensors in the case of GC or etcetera. So, they can be used to analyze the flavor or flavoring compounds and then deviation in the flavor in might indicate the spoilage of the grain enos is are now used commonly they are being used for detecting the odor similarly the carbon dioxide sensing devices can also be used to detect the spoilage like when the grains are expire or even other so during respiration the carbon dioxide is produced and the level of carbon dioxide in the storage facility may go high. So, this high level of uh, carbon dioxide if it goes beyond a certain level it may cause the spoilage or it may lower down the oxygen it may adversely affect the respiration and therefore, the grain may get spoiled. So, CO 2 level might be uh, analyzed or detected and it is it is a it can be used or it is used uh, into as an indicator for the grain spoilage for example, you can see that in the atmospheric air the carbon dioxide level is normally 0 0.03 percentage. So, if this uh, level of CO 2 inside the storage atmosphere found to the range of 0.08 to 0.1 percent means that is the at least slight accumulation of carbon dioxide. So, you can say that yes this is a stage where the spoilage might get initiated or low level of spoilage right. But if the CO 2 grows in the storage atmosphere more than 2 percent that is if it is found it might indicate that yes there is a serious spoilage or in if the CO 2 is 5 to 7. So, it may say that yes the hot spots are generated inside the grain and it is further problematic. So, in fact, the CO 2 concentration or CO 2 label even can indicate the even the beginning of that uh, spoilage is at our low level, uh, initiation of the spoilage. So, by this one can take uh, appropriate preventive measures to uh, reduce the level of spoilage or to uh, stop the deteriorative processes by these methods. Then the by measuring the physiological changes in the grain or such other materials to detect the spoilage because deteriorating seeds they change in their physiology, their physiological reactions even some of these changes are readily detectable and are indicative of the uh, occurring changes in the grain. For example, fat acidity value which is abbreviated commonly as FAB. It is a measure of the chemical changes occurring within the deteriorating seed. So, if the FAB value FAB goes beyond uh, that standard limit, so it indicates that is the grain is spoiled. So, electrical conductivity in, uh, is a measure of the condition of the cell membrane of the seeds. This head space condensation can also be monitored to detect the grain spoilage and other. So, 
the when the microorganism grow or other factors cause the, it may bring about certain physiological behavior and ultimately may result into the various process this can be analyzed there are the standard laboratory methods or probes okay similarly that is the one of the major physiological change you can say the germination that is the the spoiled grain so germination ability may get reduced so that is the grains may be particularly it, this test is important if the grain is uh, stored for seed purposes so its viability should be tested its germination should be tested the presence of sprouted grains often with green vertical shoots on the center surface of the bulk indicate that the seed moisture content is more particularly the uh, in the uppermost layer so seed germination are more than sufficient to support mold growth right sprouted grains also indicate poor air circulation in the bin and leaking roofs and are often associated with the development of an upper bridge across the bin the presence of such a bridge can be detected by grain probes etc so there are different tests that is uh, which one can use to find out whether the seed is viable or not or its uh, viability is completely lost and then uh, maybe that you can say that the seed is at least spoiled for uh, it is not fit for seed use then proximate analysis of the grain that as i told you when the grains are infested when they are contaminated when the microorganisms grow they eat away that is the insects etc they eat away the grain starch and other components they bring about changes in the grain nutritional value the protein both quantitatively and qualitatively can be changed sugars may be get changed that is oligosaccharides polysaccharides etc so the changes in their proximal the fat another tend that is the proximate uh, value like moisture protein fat as and carbohydrate of the fresh grain and standard grain may be uh, different from those of the spoiled grain and all these sets are there that is the standards of the what is the at below what level like in the if the grain it's a free fatty acids are in the aisles of fat a triglyceride level is deteriorated at free fatty acid goes beyond a certain level the grain can be considered that is spoiled similarly if the moisture content uh, increases beyond a certain level then the it uh, becomes that is a good vector grain that is the microorganisms etc like for example that is 14 percent is the safe storage moisture content so the sugars which are present in the form of starch in the grain so the microorganism they cannot uh, utilize consume that starch but when grain moisture content increases to more than uh, 16 percent or so the starch is hydrolyzed into glucose and then this glucose can be easily consumed by the uh microorganisms right and then various product like alcohol and other products are formed so the change that is the starch composition is changed the alcohol content might be there its other character so these values by there are different uh, standard chemical methods analytical standard analytical procedures in the earlier class we have in the earlier lecture we have seen that ftir or ftnir methods or other methods they can be used to find out that is quickly determined or using laboratory techniques they can be determined and this will give a good idea indication of the quality of the in then detection of insect and the level of the infestation there are various methods in the entomology all right there are different traps which are uh, available now for use for the detection and identification of the insects etc like pitfall traps tnav insect trap tnav insect removal bins that is these are used with the, the insects can be removed and then this bits can be used for quantification of the level of infestation that is the amount of insects present in the grain then uh, pheromone traps right bucket insect trap uv light traps uh, wireless funnels so all these traps etc they can be used 
to detect the infestation level. Then acoustic methods are there which are uh, even some agencies they use it and which has a good potential of use for detection of insect which are infestation level due to insect uh, in the grain. You know that what happened that is the this acoustical detection methods use insect feeding sounds to automatically monitor both internal as well as external grain feeding insects. Insects hidden inside kernels can be detected acoustically by amplification and filtering of their movement and feeding sounds. The general acoustic sensors which are used may be accelerometers, piezoelectric sensors, microphones, ultrasonic transducer etcetera. That is, so this some sound they uh, attract these insects and the insects may come out from their uh, hidden places inside the grain and they can be detected. The different acoustic probes for insect detection are there like uh, thickness uh, shear mode resonator or surface acoustic wave sensor, shear horizontal acoustic plate mode or flexural plate wave sensors and so on. That is, these different sensors are available which are used which can be used. Then we studied in the earlier class uh, hyperspectral imaging. So, this x-ray imaging which works in the similar uh, principle, but in the hyperspectral imaging normally we take the image on the surface of the grid. X-ray because of its penetration power it can take the image inside the grain. So, normally what happens when the insects they attack the grain they uh, make hole they infect cereal grains and make holes and they reside inside the ho hole. So, by sometimes if you see so from outside they are not visible. So, x-ray imaging facilitates the even uh, inspection of the infestation that is the hidden insects which might be hidden inside the grains in the holes etcetera they can be evaluated. Okay, it is a promising technology to determine the internal insect infestation inside the kernel. Okay. So, in this picture you can see that is different picture A, B, C, D here that is by x-ray imaging that is the x-ray pictures are x-ray images is so that the even very small larva or medium larva then large size larva and finally once it is developed into pupae. So, even different stages of the insects at different life stages can be found out insect infestation in the paddy etcetera. Similarly, you can see here all this by x-ray imaging one can identify. Then there are different microbiological tests which we one can perform that is in this case that is the yeast and molds that is fusarium, gramarium identification. Similarly, different uh, these are the standard laboratory protocols are there like preparation of media, culturing of the bacteria, in inoculation then incubation and finally, counting the colonies, bacterial colonies, mold colonies so on or even now there are various sensors that is our microorganism detection kits etcetera. That is these sensors they can detect which is based upon the nano sensors etcetera. They can even identify or quantify the microorganisms that are present and they can be used for detection of the spoilage. Even the biosensors, as I told you that for the grain spoilage detection, the principle of detection of biosensor is the specific binding of the analyte of interest to the complementary biorecognition elements like tissue, microorganism, organ cells, receptors, enzymes, antibodies, nucleic acid, etcetera, all these. So, they can be immobilized on a suitable support suitable medium and then can be sensed. A specific interaction results in a change uh, in one or more physico chemical properties like pH change, electron transfer, mass change, heat transfer, uptake or release of gases etcetera. 
which are detected and they can be measured by using these passes or so the particular property or that is a component etcetera or even change in the characteristics or properties they can be detected and analyzed using biosensors. Different biosensors which are available for grain spoilage detection, they may be uh, amperometric enzyme biosensors or amperometric immune sensors, conductometric and impedometric immune sensors or optical immune sensors and so on. So, friends, I know. So, you have seen that there are different ways by which one can different methods by which one can detect the. So, but ultimately, you have to take the sample, you have to evaluate for a particular observed quality and see and this can be done in both ways that is the one that uh, you if you have a spoiled sample using the visible change in the quality one can go and find out what might be the our problem why this spoilage occurs. So, accordingly the conditions that that particular conditions can be our factor that is causative factors can be controlled. So, this uh, methods of course, they for there might be set some variable variations in the depending upon the conditions depending upon the grain its components and all those things. So, obviously, these need to be standardized for grain to grain for one food to other foods and in the literature many standard practices are available and one can develop these practices uh, depending upon one's requirement. But these become that is the analytical use of different analytical and measurement techniques may be physical measurement, online measurement or chemical measurement etcetera uh, are the attributes as well as the changes which are brought into the attribute may be color change, flavor change and all those things gives a quite a good idea about the status of the spoilage of the grain. So, this should be taken care of the purpose is that is the condition should be maintained that so as to make sure that the life of the material is increased and these undesirable changes do not take place. Thank you very much.